Welcome in to the 2024 Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special. Yeah, you can have Penix, Patricia. <laughs> Who says I want him? I had to put a chip down of one player in this draft to go to the Hall of Fame. Who's my pick? And it's Marvin Harrison Jr. The Locked On Podcast Network presents the 2024 NFL Mock Draft Special. Sponsored by LinkedIn. Welcome to the 2024 Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special. This is episode two of a six-episode series that will take you through the entire first round of the NFL Draft with unparalleled insight from the local experts of all 32 teams here at the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And don't worry if your favorite team doesn't select in the first round, we've got you covered too. You'll get each selection and an inside look from all 32 of our local NFL hosts and shows and several of our college shows as well. We'll also get team building insight from the draft dudes and fantasy insight from our locked on fantasy experts for some of the biggest selections in this year's draft. And of course, we are your hosts. I am Brian Peacock, NFL analyst and co-host of the Peacock and Williamson NFL show and the Locked On 49ers podcast. Here with me are my co-hosts at PNW, former NFL scout Matt Williamson. And this year, things just keep getting better. We've got uh, joining Matt and I, NFL draft experts Keith Sanchez and Damian Parson, the outstanding duo of Locked On NFL Draft. This is the Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special, sponsored by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL terms and conditions apply. Okay, fellas, we got five picks in the books. Four of those are quarterbacks and Marvin Harrison Jr., out of Ohio State. So the Bears taking Caleb Williams one, Washington with Jaden Daniels, the second quarterback off the board, Drake May of North Carolina going to the Patriots at number three. The Vikings moving all the way up with the Arizona Cardinals at pick four for J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan. Then uh, Harrison to the Los Angeles Chargers at pick number five. That leaves us with the New York Giants. Patricia Traina standing by of Locked On Giants to make her pick for the New York Giants at pick number six. Is this just as simple as Romo Dunze or Malik Neighbors? And I'm really interested to hear what you think Patricia should do here for the Giants and which wide receiver you guys like more than anybody else. Keith, do you have a big feeling about Romo Dunze, Malik Neighbors, which prospect stands out to you of those two wide receivers if she indeed does go wide receiver here? Yeah, I'll probably go Roma Dunze just because he's a bigger body, right? In New York Giants on that roster, right? They drafted Jalen Hyatt last year and they have other smaller wide receivers with Wandale Robinson. I think they need a big body X style wide receiver, right? A guy that's 6'2, 6'3, 200 plus pounds. And then we know with Rome, right? We wondered how fast he's going to be in the 40, but he checked every single box. So Daniel Jones is a quarterback, right? Who we've had a discussion. I had a discussion on here, right? He needs somebody to get the football to, somebody to be able to catch those uh, passes, wide catch radius. And so I like Roma Dunze in this situation. Matt, what about uh, one of the other quarterbacks? Could we see another quarterback off the board? I, I don't think Daniel Jones is QB of the future for the New York Giants. And do you have a strong feeling with what should happen here at pick six? I think it has to be one of those two pass catchers. I mean, if any of the other quarterbacks were on the board, you'd have a long discussion. But maybe this is the team that trades back into the first round for the fifth guy or sixth guy. Something along those lines might make sense. But their pass catchers are pretty rough. They did a lot of work on their offensive line to their credit in free agency. So mm -hmm. I think they're a pass catcher or two away from at least making it a comfy environment for Jones, but I don't have high hopes for Jones overall. Damien, let's get one more vote. Is it neighbors or a Dunze here? I, I think it's a Dunze. Uh, I know Matt just talked about, you know, them doing some work in free agency on the old line, but I know there's still questions about Evan Neal at right tackle. So mm -hmm. could we see a Talese Fuaga off the board? Could we see one of these, a J.C. Latham? Well, maybe not J.C. because he's from Alabama. He played right tackle. They probably have PTSD from that. Maybe yeah. they don't want to go that route ever again. But, Joe you know. Walsh is still on the board, guys, too. I mean, right? if you're talking right. best player available, maybe he's the pick for the New York Giants. And I know they were – Patricia was looking to get a quarterback up earlier, too. So maybe that's the spot here. Let's find out. The pick is in. Pick number six in the – Locked on NFL mock draft special Patricia Trina of Locked on Giants standing by with the selection. With the sixth overall pick in the Locked on NFL mock draft, the New York Giants select Roma Dunze, wide receiver, 
Washington. The Giants haven't had a 1,000-yard receiver or a game-changing number one receiver since Odell Beckham Jr. in 2018. Adding a big target like Adunze not only gives an already solid receiver core a new dimension, but the possibilities over what he can do for whoever the quarterback ends up being are intriguing. Adunze's catch radius is simply sick. Put the ball within his zip code and he's more than likely to make the catch for you. Plus, with a 75% contested catch rate, which, according to Pro Football Focus, leads all draft eligible receivers with a minimum of 75 pass targets, Adunze is the type of weapon who can not only be a day one starter for the New York Giants offense that aspires to become more explosive, but he can also become the playmaker that this team has been searching for for years. So Romo Dunze, it is wide receiver out of Washington going across the country to New York. I personally thought it was going to be Malik neighbors. I think he's the dude there. Damien though, you like it. You like the catch radius, uh, maybe the first thousand yard receiver and however long for the New York giants. Uh, you like the pick here? I love the pick, right? Six, three, two, 15, four, four athlete jumps nearly 40 inches in the vert. Like he said, you need to get a boundary receiver. You need to get an X receiver for Daniel Jones, a guy that he can target at a high volume, but also win those one-on-one situations in the red zone, the guy that you can trust to just kind of lob it up and let him play basketball, let him play above the rim. I think Roma Dunze, who's also a good route runner as well, he gives you everything. He's a three-level receiver, and that's what Daniel Jones needs. And Matt, I know you have spoken in the past on the Peacock and Williamson NFL show about Romo Dunze needs to be considered in this group of three wide receivers at the top, and it's not like Marvin Harrison's way over there and Romo Dunze's way over here. No, I think eight out of ten, nine out of ten drafts, Adunze is the first receiver off the board. Adunze versus neighbors, to me, is really splitting hairs. And the one thing I just wanted to mention about the Giants that we haven't thrown in there yet is you can't count on Darren Waller either. I mean, so th- they need some – middle of the field guys, some red zone dudes, and he fits. To the war room we go. Did the Giants just get the best work ethic in this NFL draft? Zach Hicks from Locked On Colts is gushing over this pick from the Giants in the Locked On NFL war room. You know, this may not be something that people think about a lot, but when the NFL Combine came up, Odunze had this great, great opportunity to showcase who he is you know he went out there and did every single drill did all of the all the media stuff where you know neighbors obviously did the media stuff didn't do any of the drills marvin harrison jr didn't do really anything when he was there so adunze of the top three receivers went out there and did every drill he was staying until the very end doing the three cone like eight times over and over again to do that kind of stuff so i know this is a very little thing you know it's not something that people talk about obviously because you can look at production and all these other things but in a time where nobody's really doing every drill at the combine, guys are opting out and doing all these things. NFL GMs and coaches are seeing this guy who's staying out there till 9 p.m. at night doing this three cone because he wants to get the certain number that he wants to get to. So I, I think that just shows the competitiveness that he has and, and just shows the kind of player he is. And then you add that to the production. You add that to the athleticism. And you just have this really, really great wide receiver prospect. I think he's a great player. I, I really like his game. On to the Tennessee Titans at pick number seven. And guys, can Tyler Rowland of Locked On Titans shock the world? Every single mock draft I have seen, and I can't remember a year where people are projecting one player to a pick as deep in the draft as pick number seven as Joe Alt, the tackle out of Notre Dame, is being projected to the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Keith, do do you see the Tennessee Titans potentially go in any other direction here, or is this going to be the chalkiest pick of all time? Like, can you think of a time ever when there's been a pick <laughs> at, like, as deep as seven, even after pick one, most years, we have no idea what's going on. Pick number seven and everyone already knows exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, no, it just seems like it fits right from a, a positional team knee, right? But then also just, I, I don't want to say the character part of it, but it just seems like Joe Alt fits in Nashville, Tennessee, right? Like he should be a Tennessee Titan. Um, I don't think they should go any other direction. Listen, you you have, um, you know, your quarterback who you drafted last year, Will Levis. He's a deep ball guy. Um, the, the questions and the concerns that we had was being a quick processor, right? If he's not a quick processor, how do you help solve that? Potentially give him another half a second more to get rid of the football, right? And I think uh, you combine with a, uh, not, I'm sorry, not Will Levis. You combine Joe Oat and Peter Skaronsky on that left side, and then that really gives him a good one-two punch moving forward into his career. It's a dam- dynamic left side of the offensive line potentially, but Damian, what's your draft board look like? Is Neighbors ahead of Alt? And is it that simple? You just take the best player if it is the case. 
No, Joe Alt's above neighbors for me. Um, Ooh, okay. but it's, it's close, right? So, but like he said, man, you gotta you gotta sure up one of the weakest points of your roster, and that is the offensive line. And you brought in Calvin Ridley, right? You paid him a lot of money to come that what 53 mil guaranteed. You want to pay that type of money to a receiver, you have DeAndre Hopkins, you just gotta give your quarterback time to be able to feed these guys and play point guard and get the ball to his weapons. Well, the pick is in. Didn't take long. Tyler Roland of Locked On Titans ready to go with the seventh pick in the Locked On NFL mock draft. With the seventh pick in the Locked On NFL mock draft, the Tennessee Titans select Joe Alt, offensive tackle, Notre Dame. This is a perfect fit for the Tennessee Titans in an ideal scenario. The Titans have had one of the worst left tackle situations in the NFL for multiple years running. Alt is a guy who can solve that issue for a decade. He's got great size at six foot eight, incredibly long arms, 34 and a quarter long. This is a perfect fit for the Titans because not only do you get Joe Alt, who has been an excellent prospect in college, but you pair him with Bill Callahan, one of the best offensive line coaches. In NFL history, uh, he's going to be able to come in right away, stabilize that left tackle position for the Titans and quarterback Will Levis, who needs to be put in a better environment. Alt is a converted tight end, so he's got great athleticism for a guy his size. Again, a perfect prospect to pair with the Tennessee Titans. Joe Alt at left tackle. Matt, you always talk about the nest. They're building a nest for their young quarterback over there in Tennessee. It's Joe Alt out of the University of Notre Dame and about the only negative I've ever seen about Joe Alt is oh, maybe he's kind of too tall, maybe even. I don't know. Like, what? You know, he's too good of a prospect. Um, Joe Alt to the Titans. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, chalky, boring, solid. I mean, I think it's still a great pick, despite everyone seeing it coming a mile away, especially after the Ridley signing, which I thought was an overpay. But that being said, they're all in on Levis, and they're going to do everything they possibly can to see if he sinks or swims. And if he sinks, they'll go get somebody else. If he swims, great. You know, I mean, so be it. So, you know, even after drafting Skaronsky last year, I thought this was probably the worst offensive line in the entire league and just too hard to judge everyone because they're not blocking a soul. Um, I have no problem with the Callahan hiring. But my favorite part of it is daddy came along, you know, coach these guys up. I'd be, I'd be using third, fourth round picks on developmental centers and guards too. Uniting the Callahans. Uh, that, yeah. that is an underrated storyline there in Tennessee. And yeah, fix your biggest need with maybe your best prospect available for you. Need meets value here. Super easy selection for Tyler of, uh, of locked on Titans. Uh, Keith, what's the sky report on, on Joel? How good can he be in the NFL? Uh, one of the best offensive tackles in the entire NFL, if you ask me, in my opinion, um, this is a guy that makes the position look easy, right? He makes it look boring, but we know what offensive linemen, we always say, right, we don't want to hear your name. We don't want to um hear, you know, penalty or holding or anything like that. So he's a guy that just makes it look easy, man. And I think his natural length being at 6'8", right, it autom automatically gives him advantage. But we talked about it. Former tight end, he has really good, really good feet, and he's just consistent. I think he's the definition of a plug and play guy, you know exactly what you're going to get out of him, and you're ready to rock and roll. Let's check in with Tyler Wojak of Locked On Irish to see what Joe Alt brings to his new NFL team. First and foremost, I think he's the best offensive lineman in what could be a historically great class for the position group. He's got everything you need in a modern left tackle. First off, he's got the size. He is enormous. He measured in at six foot nine inches, 321 pounds, and a 34 and a quarter inch wingspan at the NFL Combine. Plus, he's very disciplined. He rarely ever gets beat. He can drive block in the run game, wall off any edge rusher trying to get after the quarterback. His feet are fluid, and he has the instincts to mare edge to edge rush out. Challenges. In addition to his elite skill set, he's an exceptional teammate and leader. He was voted by his teammates to be one of four team captains during his junior season at Notre Dame, which is very rare and very impressive. His father, John Alt, was a Pro Bowl NFL tackle, and I think that whatever team is lucky enough to draft Joe Alt is getting a plug-and-play starter and a future All-Pro left tackle. Tony Wiggins from the Locked On Jags podcast is giving a vocabulary lesson in the Locked On NFL war room when it comes to the word prospect and why this word fits this pick perfectly. I always tell people this, and you notice neighbors is still on the board, right? So I, I've been looking at this for a long time. I've been trying to tell people what this word means. So the definition is the possibility or likelihood of some future event occurring, right? So that's why 
there's like this group think when it comes to the NFL GMs, they all go with the guy that's most likely, not their gut. You can do gut later, but right now, up top, you have to go with the most likely, and there is no better tackle prospect that is most likely to be good than Joe Alt. Okay, that's the first offensive lineman off the board in our Locked On NFL Mock Draft special. Let's see what Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast have to say about how the board has fallen so far. Joe, we have four quarterbacks, two wide receivers, and now our first offensive lineman. If that's not 2024 football for you in a nutshell, I don't know what is. You have Rome Adunze coming off after Marvis Harrison Jr., and then Joe Alt coming off to the Tennessee Titans to get things started with the big uglies up front. Yeah, I'm excited for Roma Dunze to head to the New York Giants. A clear need. If they want Daniel Jones to have a real chance to be their guy and play to his maximum potential, they needed to get more weapons in the passing game. And I think there's a very complete skill set there with Odunze in terms of route running, size, athleticism. He can win at all three levels of the field, and that's exactly what they need. They need a guy, a go-to guy for that passing game. I think they have some nice ancillary pieces to it, but they needed a guy that, hey, it's a long and late down. We need a completion. We know that that guy's going to get open and catch the football, and they can funnel that passing game through Roma Dunze and something that Brian Dabo hasn't really had yet as the head coach and offensive guru there with the New York Giants. Well, and you think about that offense and, and what it was in Buffalo with Brian Dable and looking to be aggressive and push the ball down the field and the parallel to what the Washington Huskies were this past season in college football is is very apparent. So I think there's a stylistic fit there that makes a lot of sense as well. But stylistic fits for Tennessee and Joe Alt on the offensive line with an interior offensive line that has a first-round pick last year in Peter Skaronsky, a really, really good center that they signed big money contract this free agency period in Lloyd Cushenberry. And now you get Joe Walt. I mean, this offensive line very suddenly shifting and evolving into an asset for the Titans in their rebuild. Now, how about Joe Walt being the first offensive lineman selected? Yeah. We've talked so much about how good this offensive line class is. Joe Alt, the first one off the board. And it's funny because coming out last year, Olu Fashanu, the tackle from Penn State, was all the rave. And so many people couldn't believe that he went back to school and thought he was a for sure top five pick, top ten pick. Well, he stays in school, and he's not the first offensive lineman on the board. Surely he's coming off at some point in this first round. But Joe Alt, who you know has the great pedigree with the offensive line bloodlines, was kind of a converted tight end. You could tell he really took a big jump this past season and earns himself the opportunity to be that first guy off the board when it comes to these tackles. Yeah, and the growth that he showed this year, I think, was the separating factor. He certainly became a more complete offensive tackle this season and when teams are trying to make that decision, particularly at the top, it's not just the tools, it's it's the trajectory. And Alt is certainly on the right path. And if he can continue that moving forward once he makes the NFL leap, he's going to be a household name soon before long in the trenches. The Atlanta Falcons are standing by to make their selection. Will they land a big weapon to help out their new starting quarterback, Kirk Cousins, or focus on bolstering the defensive side of the football? Find out next on the 2024 Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for a small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. On to pick eight in this mock draft, fellas. We've got the Atlanta Falcons and Aaron Freeman on the clock from Locked On Falcons. Uh, Malik Neighbors still on the board. Any defensive player in the entire draft is still on the board, guys. Damian, how do you like this going for Atlanta at pick eight? I mean, I think they have the pick of the litter of what they want to do. Jared Verse is still there. Lay two, Law two still there. Uh, Dallas Turner's available. But I think Malik Neighbors. I think this is a team 
that saw a lot of inept offensive football play over the past couple of years. And I think that could sway them with Zach Robinson as the new OC, Raheem Morris as the head coach. And when you bring Kirk Cousins in, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, but they do need that true speed threat. I know they brought in Darnell Mooney, but you talk about speed, Malik Neighbors is still there. And he's one of the most explosive players in this draft. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's a pick. I mean, they got London, they got Mooney, they got Kyle Pitts. Uh, they brought in Ray Ray McLeod. They've done Ron a lot Dan of work off the side Moore, of the ball, Dijon. right? And uh, see, yeah, t- tons of weapons. Do you just go outscore everybody? And I mean, who would? I mean, Kirk Cousins would be an extremely happy human being, I guess, uh, if you added someone like M- Malik Neighbors to it. But you're trying to win football games. Doesn't defense win championships, Keith? Yeah, no, definitely. I'm, I definitely believe in defense winning championships, but I look at this in the NFC South. I have no problem with them going offense at all. If you go Malik Neighbors and we look at the history of GM Terry Fontenot, right? He loads up on the offensive side of the football, and it seems like every year we tell him, hey, you don't necessarily need that guy, right? When they drafted Kyle Pitts and was on the Drake London, he was like, hey, did you need Drake London? And then from Drake London to Bijan Robinson, everybody was saying, hey, you went offense already. Let's try something to get a quarterback. Um, I think he's a guy that just believes in drafting high high-level offensive prospects, and then now they have the quarterback, Kirk Cousins, and NFC South, I feel like it's still there. It could be theirs for the taking if, if all of this thing works out. Yeah, and, and along those lines, guys, I mean, I think we all agree Neighbors is the best prospect on the board. Mm-hmm. You know, matching him with in a dome, Southern, you know, all the, the, the warm weather games they're going to play, his speed's going to play really, really well. And I honestly don't want to be the team that's taking the first offensive player off the board in this draft because I just don't know who that player is, to be honest with you. But, man, can't you come up with five, six, seven teams that should be calling the Falcons right now to get to this pick, you know? Absolutely. It's a, it's a good place for the Atlanta Falcons to be, very mobile. They could go up, down. They've hit a lot of needs in the offseason, offense, defense. Let's find out what Aaron Freeman does here, the host of Locked On Falcons with the eighth pick in the Locked On NFL mock draft. With the eighth pick in the Locked On NFL Mock Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Malik Neighbors, wide receiver, LSU. Yes, the Atlanta Falcons have done it again for the fourth consecutive year, selecting an offensive skill position player in the top 10 of the draft. But after getting Kyle Pitts, Drake London, B. John Robinson, Malik Neighbors is the most talented of that group. He's going to add much needed juice explosiveness to a Falcons offense that desperately needs it finishing bottom four in the NFL over the past three years in explosive 20 plus yard plays. And now with the upgrade at quarterback this off season with the Falcons signing Kirk cousins, they now have a passer that can get the ball reliably consistently into the hands of dynamic playmakers like Malik neighbors who helped uh, Jaden Daniels become a Heisman trophy winner. He's one of my favorite prospects in this 2024 draft. If you could do that for Jaden Daniels, imagine what he can do for Kirk Cousins as the Falcons look to become real contenders in the NFC in 2024 and beyond. Well, guys, I want to remind everybody, uh, let's go in the way back machine, back to 2007. And the Detroit Lions drafted Calvin Johnson. Can you imagine if the Lions said, oh, man, we drafted Carlos Rogers and Big Mike Williams and four wide receivers. We can't draft four wide receivers in a row, so we're going to pass on this Hall of Famer to get a position we need a little bit more. Uh, I like what Matt said before the pick, and, and I like the reasoning there from Aaron. Just draft the best player available and 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 move on. That's what the, the first round of the NFL draft is all about, right, Keith? Yes, definitely. And they, and they got the best football player. Um, Listen, I went to the pro day, right? And I'm standing at LSU on the sideline in familiar territory, you know, because I worked there, coached there. And then I'm watching this wide receiver Malik Neighbors work out. And I'm like, man, this looks really familiar, right? And I, and I thought about it. I said, he's one of those guys. And when I say one of those guys, that means the Odell Beckhams, the Jarvis Landry's, the Jamar Chases, the Justin Jefferson. And a lot is to be made about the 40 time, right? Like how fast do you run in a straight line? The part that's most impressive for me is his start stop ability ability to accelerate and decelerate and his explosiveness in and out of those breaks that I think will give people problems and I look at this offense and this offense specifically I really like it because the head coach what well, offensive coordinator, I'm sorry, both come from the Rams, right? And we know that the Cooper Cup, the Robert Woods, right? They move these wide receivers around and put them in advantageous situations. Malik Neighbors is most dangerous when he's playing in the slot, and you can best believe he's going to get some of that action in a, as a slot wide receiver with the Atlanta Falcons. Damian, uh, can you talk a little bit more about Malik Neighbors and the type of player he is? Because 
you know, the acceleration is obvious, uh, but he's not just a race car. There's some, there's some physicality to his game. There's that, my, that my ball mentality that I think you have to have to be a great NFL wide receiver. Yeah, he's a physical player, right? You know, a guy that can r- make plays after the catch, run through arm tackles. He's very difficult for the first defender to bring down. So you think about the quick game. When you have two twin towers like Drake London and Kyle Pitts, guys who are going to stretch vertically, kind of force safeties to stay on top of the roof. When you had that, when you open up that space between the hashes in the middle of the field, that's where Malik Neighbors can live and not just live, but thrive for this team. But then the only question I have is a question that we always talk about when we have so many weapons. There's only one football, right? There's only one football. When you got Bijan, you got Malik, you got Kyle, you got uh, Drake. Like, how are we distributing this to make sure everyone is happy? Because at the end of the day, now you look at Raheem Morris and Zach Robinson, you're going to have to be your – you have to put your, your Phil Jackson mask on. You're going to have to be able to keep all these young players happy, keep the Eagles down so that you can win football games. Carolyn Fenton knows Malik Neighbors and the LSU Tigers better than just about anyone except maybe Keith Sanchez. Let's see what she feels Neighbors brings to her new club. Malik Neighbors had a high draft stock coming out of LSU, and after LSU's pro day, it's raising even more. I'm Caroline Fenton of Locked On LSU, and Malik Neighbors is regarded as one of the one of the top wide receivers in this year's draft for several reasons. First and foremost, it's his versatility. He can play on the outside, he can play in the slot, and he has experience of doing both in his time at LSU. Second of all, it's his yards after the catch ability. Think about a guy in the NFL like an A.J. Brown. Although Malik Neighbors doesn't have the size of an A.J. Brown, Malik Neighbors will continue to fight for extra yards, even if it's just a two, three, four-yard pickup, or he can turn it into a 10 to 15-yard explosive play after the catch. I also think what separates Malik Neighbors more Uh, versus any other receiver in this draft, isn't just his down-the-field speed. That's not just his foot speed, although that 4-3-40 was awfully impressive at at his pro day. It's also the acceleration and the burst and the quickness and his ability to turn on a dime. I think about maybe an Antonio Brown or a Calvin Ridley in their prime. You look at the history of LSU receivers. Oda Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. Malik Neighbors is the next one. How will this pick fit in with Atlanta's new quarterback in Kirk Cousins? Let's head back to the Locked On NFL War Room and hear what our Kirk Cousins expert, Locked On Vikings host, Luke Braun, has to say. This is important for Atlanta with Kirk Cousins uh, because Kirk Cousins, he'll test a tight window sometimes, but he's pretty quick to come off you if you're one of those guys that like stays covered and wins a contested catch. That's not really a jive with the way that his brain works, which is kind of a weird, like a Drake London thing that's sort of concerning. So yeah, get me somebody that's a little bit quicker that gets that separation that can do stuff after the catch. Um, you know, get you those kind of manufactured bubble screen type things to get Kirk Cousins into rhythm. I think that's like the vision here. Although I am starting to get a little worried about that Falcons defense. And if you're chasing the mm-hmm. game all day, it doesn't matter how much talent you have, you know. Locked on fantasy expert Kate Majuke has some thoughts on the fantasy impact of Malik Neighbors' landing spot with the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons are loading up with yet another offensive weapon, utilizing another top 10 pick on a skilled position player for the fourth consecutive season. What can fantasy football managers expect from Neighbors in year one? Explosion. Malik Neighbors is an elite athlete and a top-end separator that's going to give Kirk Cousins and the rest of the Atlanta Falcons offense the type of vertical threat they have sorely been missing. With a number of weapons in Atlanta at Kirk Cousins' disposal, including wide receiver Drake London, tight end Kyle Pitts, and running back Bijan Robinson, don't be surprised if Malik Neighbors offers a little bit less consistency for fantasy football managers in comparison to some of the other top 10 receivers in this draft class, even despite his crazy tool set as an elite athlete the biggest winner of all for this draft pick isn't neighbors at all it's actually kirk cousins who's bound for yet another top 12 fantasy season surrounded by an elite group of skill position players and i totally agree with kate i mean cousins from a fantasy perspective is the one that wins here i have super high hopes for london this year for fantasy to be honest with you but boy that would take that's a bit of a wet blanket for London all of a sudden if another huge mouth to feed showed up there. with Because Bijan's going to catch his. I think Pitts hopefully is healthier this year and maybe you know hits his stride. So great for Cousins. I don't know it's the best landing spot for neighbors and certainly hurts London. 
I, I would say this real quick from a fantasy perspective, right? Kirk Cousins throughout his career has shown the ability to feed two wide receivers, right? All the way going back to his Stephon Diggs and Adam Thielen. So I'm with you, right? It's just a matter of picking which two, right? And if you're, yeah. if you're Drake London, you're like, oh, man, I might be the odd man out on this situation. But, yeah, they're definitely going to be two guys that could contribute to this from a fantasy perspective. Look, it's a new regime as well in Atlanta. So could they even dangle – Drake London in a situation like this and, and bring in their guys and build the thing the way they want to and and, and maybe send uh, Drake London out and maybe he could be he the number one somewhere else instead. I was See, I was thinking maybe they'd ship out Pitts. I was, I was thinking that somebody's going to be the odd man out in this situation, right? We get to the middle of the season, no matter even if they're having a really good season, teams are going to call for one of these. Whoever's not getting the ball, teams are going to call that agent, call the team like, hey, your guy's not getting fed over there. We absolutely will send over some send over picks, some draft capital, and bring them over into our offense. Somebody in this situation, someone's going to be moved at some point. The Chicago Bears kicked us off with Caleb Williams at pick number one in this mock draft. They are back on the clock at pick number nine next. I've been told I'm a competitive person, and yeah, I do have a competitive side. We all do, and my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times, and it's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with your friends, and I can charge them rent on my Iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly, but now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store or Google Play. Lauren Cox of Locked On Bears having a lot of fun in this Locked On NFL draft, uh, Locked On NFL Network mock draft, and uh, he's a busy man. I know he's been talking about trades and moving around from their second selection after going with Caleb Williams at number one. Right now, the Bears still on the clock, though, and all of the defensive players in the entire draft still on the board. A ton of great offensive linemen. The top receivers have gone, but there's some other really good wide receivers as well in this class. What do you think the Bears should do here, Matt, if you were Lauren Cox and you were selecting for Chicago? Is there a player that's that's standing out to you that's like, okay, this is this is where this is the direction this team has to go to build this thing? No, and that would concern me. I, I would use every second hoping somebody calls me to come get this pick if it fell this way, to be honest with you. Like, hey, I like some of the edge good guys. I mean, I think Leitu's the best player off the edge. And and you know, somebody to partner with sweat would make a lot of sense. Maybe that's Dallas Turner. I mean, maybe it's verse, whoever you verse, whoever you like. But I would also even consider taking a Latham or a Fawaga and just shoving them at guard and making the offense complete. But, boy, I would hope somebody calls me to move back three, four, five spots because there's not a standout name to me right here. Damien, do you think that they're done on the offensive line? Because I, I feel like in this class, with the strength of this class, maybe just getting a, another offensive tackle, making sure, you know, Braxton Jones is a good player, former fifth-round pick. But you can move guys around, get the best five up front if maybe the best player on the board is still an offensive lineman. Uh, if the best player on the board is a wide receiver, help out your young quarterback. No, I, I think the offensive line could still use uh, an injection of some talent. I, I, I've thought about the left tackle spot, and I'm like, what if Joe Alt or Olu fell to this pick for Chicago, right? You, you knew what you did wrong with Justin Fields. Everything you did, everything wrong. You didn't, protect them, you didn't give them weapons until what year three or four. So you don't want to do that with Caleb. So as as solid as Braxton Braxton Jones has been, I still would look at Olu Fashanu, who is my second graded offensive tackle on the board right here. Because at the end of the day, Braxton being a former fifth round pick, solid, and I expected him to be solid. But he's not keeping me away from a potential cornerstone left tackle like Olu F fashion new. If they hadn't signed Gerald Everett to go along with Komet, I'd be thinking Brock Bowers here, but now Absolutely. it's a little too crowded or maybe it's crap pass catchers, you know? 
I mean, we're seeing more two tights. And look, should we just consider Brock Bowers a wide receiver? And is he mm-hmm. the best receiver left on the board for teams? So that's an interesting angle. That, that Keenan's would be a slot, though, too. It might get a little redundant. You know? Yeah, bigger slot. Yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, let's find out. The pick is in. Locked On Bears host Lauren Cox with the ninth selection in the 2024 Locked On NFL mock draft. With the ninth pick in the Locked On NFL mock draft, the Chicago Bears select Dallas Turner, edge rusher, Alabama. With the top three wide receivers off the board, I'm happy to settle for the best defensive player in the NFL draft and get a dynamic edge rushing threat to pair with Montez Sweat and make this Bears defensive line deadly. A lot of the focus from the Bears this offseason has been on the offense and getting everything ready for Caleb Williams. But with this other first round pick, Ryan Poles is finally able to make that splash on defense and get an edge rusher with some of the best physical tools in this draft. The speed, the explosiveness, the ability to bend that edge and cause problems when you're busy double teaming Montez Sweat on the other side. This is exactly what this Bears defense is missing right now. And when you combine that improved pass rush with an already strong secondary on the back end, all of a sudden you're not going to have to ask Caleb Williams to score 40 points a game like he did in college, but he can come into the NFL, enjoy a Bears defense that'll take some of the pressure off of him and make everyone's job easier in Chicago. As far as all the defensive players available for the Chicago Bears, I do like the fit of Dallas Turner best with the bears because that pass rush and his speed and his athleticism coming off the edge. And I could see a number of defensive players being the first defender off the board in this class. What's the scouting report Keith on Dallas Turner. We know we went crazy. The combine really productive for Nick Saban's defense at Alabama. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think it's his first step quickness, first step explosiveness, right? We, he showed that in his 40 time, the type of athlete he was uh, moving forward, right? But I think there's also some developmental things, uh, traits that can uh, be developed while he's with the Chicago Bears. And it's crazy because the one player that he reminded me of was Montez Sweat. And that's a good thing and also a question mark, right, too, because I, I look at the stats that Montez Sweat has put up, right? It's seven sacks, nine sacks, five sacks, eight sacks, right? And I think that kind of hints to Matt that point is there finding a defensive prospect here. There's not a guy that you feel like, you know what, you can book it. This guy is going to be, you know, a, a year in and year out pro bowl type of football player. I think it helps fulfill a need. But if I, if you ask me on a value scale, I would say I would probably have liked to move down a couple more picks if that's pick 15 and grab Dallas Turner or if Dallas Turner is going, I would be perfectly fine with Jared Versa or Leah Tulatu. I totally get that too. And I always think about this in Chicago and some other towns too. When it's December and it's sloppy and windy and your footing's yeah. bad, what's Dallas Turner going to do off the edge? You know what I mean? Right. Or play off when you're hosting a playoff game, hopefully one day. You know. I think um, <clears throat> I agree. With, I agree with everything, especially what you just said, Matt, because that's what was going through my mind as well. Is that Dallas Turner is a fastball off the edge, but when you throw the elements into it, you mm-hmm. take that speed off the fastball, right? And for me, if you're going to go edge here, if you can't move back, I rather I thought about lay two. Because I was like, he's the best and most polished guy. But I have concerns with him holding up at the point of attack in the run game at times. And with this division, you know that Detroit's going to run the ball. You know that Green Bay is going to run the ball. right? You know that Minnesota's going to run the ball. Now with Aaron Jones there, I'd rather have a Jared Verse to not only bring that first step explosiveness and speed, but now he can also set the edge and convert speed to power. And you have two guys that can walk tackles back right into the quarterback and have them try to step up into, into Gervin Dexter and some of these other guys. And maybe Matt Everflus gets m- even more creative with his blitz packages as well to really kind of corral some of these quarterbacks. So I would have probably went with verse here. Man, for, for me, it's upside. Uh, I, I like Dallas Turner. I like the pick. When, when you look at some of the best edge rushers in the NFL and, and that ability that you just can't teach with his burst and his athleticism, and he's even got some length, even though he's not the biggest the uh, big, biggest edge guy uh, in the draft. Uh, I, I like it. I think you swing for it if you're the the Bears there. So uh, I like the pick. Let's see what Luke Robinson, Luke Robinson has to say. He's Luke Robinson's been very complimentary of his Crimson Tide draft prospects over the course of the last season. Let's see how much he likes Dallas Turner to Chicago. This is a guy that is in the mold of Will Anderson. Some people, some Alabama fans, have thought that uh, Dallas Turner could actually be better than Will Anderson. 
I don't know if that's the case. Will Anderson is a freak of nature, but Dallas is really, really close. Uh, he's an excellent player. He arrives with a lot of violence, super, super speedy, just cat like quickness. And he can also run down uh, a receiver if he had to in some cases. Um, he's also just a good kid. He has played for some winning programs, both in Fort Lauderdale and, of course, at the University of Alabama at 6'3", 247. He's big enough. He's not um, Jadavion Clowney size, but he makes up for it with speed, length, and he's got enough strength, as I've said. So I feel like this guy can definitely be a year one starter, whoever is lucky enough to draft him. On to the final selection of our mock draft special. Today's episode, that is pick number 10. We're taking you all the way through round one and beyond here. John Butchko, the host of Locked On Jets, is uh, on the clock here with the 10th selection. And with the way this board has fallen, guys, um, Dallas Turner, the first defensive player off the board, only one tackle, and everybody else is quarterbacks and wide receivers. So still a fantastic group of prospects to pick from at pick number ten, uh, number ten here for for John Butchko, Matt, where do you see him going? Yeah, they traded for Hassan Reddick, so I don't think they're in the mix for any of these edge guys. Just signed Mike Williams, and considering the receivers that are off the board, I don't think they go that direction. They were mocked for a tackle by everyone forever, but then they trade for Morgan Moses, signed Tyron Smith, and I realize those guys have durability and age concerns, but I'm with the consensus here that. Aaron Rodgers with Brock Bowers, sign me up for that. Yeah, that's interesting. We talked about that a little bit ago, right, uh, Keith, uh, with like, okay, well, let's ask Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is like quasi-GM right now, it feels like, with the New York Jets. Which yeah. player do you want? Would he want a green receiver that 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 maybe he doesn't jive with? Was it, Would he want another uh, offensive lineman? Does he want the best receiver? Does he want a defense to help put him back on the field as much as possible? What do you think he would say about this selection? I would think he would say, give me more offense, right? Give me offense, give me offense, give me offense. So, yeah, I, I like the Brock Bauer selection. And is this a spot where we see one of these wide receivers we wasn't expecting to go as high, go even higher because New York Jets are now they're in a position to where they're trying to find a wide receiver? I agree with Matt. If, if this was a, a, a pre-free agency mock draft, right, it would be offensive tackle, fell right to you, you go with it, and you feel really good about it. But now I don't necessarily think or – yeah, I don't think that would be the selection right here. Or maybe they just pull a, a Packers and draft the quarterback of the future here. <laughs> and really <laughs> take off Aaron Rodgers. All right, uh, let's find out what is the pick. It is in John Butchko of Locked On Jets with the 10th selection in the Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special. With the 10th pick in the Locked On Mock Draft, the New York Jets select Olu Fashanu, tackled out of Penn State. The Jets have addressed their need at tackle in the short term by signing Tyron Smith and trading for Morgan Moses. However, the Jets still have a major need on the offensive line, particularly at the tackle position in the long run. Smith and Moses are both 33 years old and in, in the final year of their respective contracts. So next offseason, the Jets are going to be in the market for two tackles. You might as well get the jump on that when you have the opportunity to pick a player like Olu Fashanu in the first round this year. Additionally, Fashanu could compete for a starting job at the right tackle position with Moses, and he's insurance. Tyron Smith is a guy with a major injury history. He has not played a full season without missing a game since 2015, so the Jets want to make sure they have quality tackle depth. In the long run, Fashanu should be Smith's replacement as the Jets' long-term left tackle. Interesting. Keith, what do you think? The idea that the, the Jets, even during you know Olu Fashanu's rookie season are probably going to need at least three tackles to finish the year with the veterans they have in there and Tyron Smith and you don't have a long-term solution anyway so like you know going through this free agency doesn't seem like it's a very big need coming into the draft what do you think about the selection at pick 10 yeah I, I like the player I really like the player I understand the situation, but I think the large factor that's left out of this is that Aaron Rodgers may only be there a year or two, right? And so we we can't predict 
10 years down the line when as we're currently constructed with our hall of fame quarterback that we pay so much money for we only we may only have one year with him so we have to go all in on this year and i think the idea and the philosophy was that the new york jets front office knew that right and so they should stick to that and that's why you go get an offensive weapon or you trade back and then you know potentially if you want an offensive tackle now you have two second rounders or something like that to grab some more playmakers at the wide receiver position so i like olu Fashanu. i understand boosting the off offensive line but aaron Rodgers in that situation you know what you created when you got him that you only potentially had two years or a year left with him matt there's a, a hall of fame tackle that played guard early in his career and Fashionu wouldn't be the first guy to do that. Do you think he can play some guard early on for the Jets if if that's what they need? Because I don't think you're going to draft the guy top 10 and just sit him on the bench for a year. Yeah, I think what you're referring to, and these guys are a little young, but Jonathan Ogden, you know, 6'8", six, 6'9", six, left tackle, first-round pick, early pick, started out at guard just to get your best five on the field. Moses is coming off a pack. Tyron Smith's injured a lot, but still playing quite well. He'd be a great mentor for Fashion U, obviously. You could figure out a five-man configuration where you have a lot of talent on the field, and it does build for tomorrow. And I like the prospect a lot from Penn State, but I would have gone Bowers. Ten picks in the books. It's time to check in with the draft dudes. Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino, thoughts on how the top ten has fallen in the Locked On NFL mock draft special. Kyle, what a fun batch of picks we had here to close out the top 10. Malik Neighbors to Atlanta might be my favorite pick so far. We get our first defensive player in Dallas Turner going to the Chicago Bears. And then that offensive tackle that was in that conversation to be OT1. Olu Fashanu is OT2 going to the New York Jets. But I got to start this conversation with Malik Neighbors to the Atlanta Falcons. A fascinating situation that they were in between, well, do we take the wide receiver or do we kind of help the bigger need on our team, which is the defensive side of the football? And they have their choice of any defensive prospect in this class. They go with neighbors and it's a decision that I love. I like Darnell Mooney. I like Drake London, but neither makes me say no to Malik neighbors and the upside and the potential that he has in this offense to go with Bijan Robinson, to go with Kyle Pitts. I mean, Kirk cousins has a full complement of weapons to go out there and score a bunch of points in Atlanta. Now, they still got work to do on defense, but I don't think any defensive player could have made the impact that Malik Neighbors can make for this team. I thought he was the clear best player on the board, and I applaud them for making that pick. Yeah, I mean, even playing uh, against some good defenses in the NFC South, like Tampa and, and New Orleans, what we set in the over-under at for points for Atlanta this year, 480. Oh, <laughs> you can take the over-under on that. I mean, that's they're going to score a lot of points, and that's a testament to – they bring in Kirk Cousins and they say, okay, this is our identity now. And really investing in their identity instead of trying to just have what they feel is adequate answers at every spot along the board, you're never going to have adequate answers all the way across the board. It's very rare for team building for you to be able to say that. So to, to lean into this is who we are, this is what we've invested in the past few years, let's keep investing in it so that our assets and our strength can be our strength, uh, I, I think is a really – uh, ambitious but but inspired decision for Atlanta. So I, I certainly think that's the neighbors conversation and great value here for them at pick number eight as well. No question. How about Dallas Turner, our first defensive prospect off the board at number nine to the Chicago Bears? I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, Montez Sweat, a great addition for them at the trade deadline and looks like he's going to be, you know, a, an absolute havoc wreaker and, and game changer and playmaker for that front. He needed a running bait. And now they get Dallas Turner, who's got a ton of length, has a ton of upside in terms of the, the burst that he offers, the flexibility. And I, I feel like there's so much more to unlock with his pass rush skill set. The edge position has kind of been an issue for Chicago for a long time. You'd like to think with Dallas Turner and Montez Sweat, that's a great pair for them to build moving forward. Absolutely. And, and then uh, Olu Fushanu with 10 to the Jets. Uh, no such thing as too many good offensive linemen. Their answers this offseason have been older players. So I, I love having the insurance policy of a developmental player who maybe you'd love to find a way for him to crack the starting lineup from the jump. But either way, with how bad the offensive line was last year and how much it disrupted that entire season for the New York Jets, uh, you have to applaud sticking true to value on the board 
and making sure that's not going to happen to your offense again this year. Arizona Cardinals fans about to start having a lot of fun with this Locked On NFL Mock Draft special, the first of their three now first-round picks after moving down from pick four with the Minnesota Vikings. They are up next at pick number 11 on episode three. Still some quarterbacks out there. Could the Denver Broncos, the Las Vegas Raiders be going QB on episode three of the Mock Draft special? Tune in to find out. That is the end of episode two of our Mock Draft special sponsored by Leaked In. Next, we'll get to the picks in the top 15, finish up that top 15 of Mock Draft selections. And don't forget, you can find the entire special on both audio and video at the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show, Locked On NFL Draft, and Locked On NFL Podcast feeds for Matt Williamson, Damian Parson, and Keith Sanchez. I'm Brian Peacock. We'll see you for the rest of the top 15 on the next episode of the Locked On NFL Mock Draft Special, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.